Hi, good evening, guys. This is Dr. Jenny Yusuf, physical therapist and doctor of physical therapy, creator and founder of Balance and Fall Support Group and Fishygen PT and Wellness. For tonight, for our thanks, God, it's Thursday. It's another innovator, physical therapist, and PT entrepreneur we will going to present and do highlights. So she is our highlights for this Monday in Balance and Fall Support Group. She's very special because she's my friend and we are here based in Delaware. So good morning if you're in Philippines. Happy holidays everyone. So I'm sure you're all busy for the holidays. So salam alaikum if you're watching in Abu Dhabi and UAE. All right. So tonight I would like to introduce you. She's a doctor of physical therapy graduated in University of Montana and she is also physical therapist, doctor of physical therapy for almost 21 years and she is here for almost like more than 12 or 11 years in America and we're based in Delaware. She is studied in Philippines and she's an international physical therapist. She helped in mentoring different physical therapists. She extern um extern in St. Luke's Hospital in Philippines. It's a very famous hospital um in jaco almost like um what do you call that like um we have it also like jaco i i forgot how do you um i think when you say jaco it is a prestigious uh, prestigious hospital base you know and also outpatient physical therapy medical city so she, that's all her experience she's also a lecturer a teacher educator for the CNAs, caregivers. She's really well diverse. And for tonight, she will tell us more that physical therapy can be a PT entrepreneur and we will learn more why financial literacy is very important. We didn't learn that in college. Never we learned that. Even only five states are doing that in this in states, university uh, in United States. Only five colleges before and now seven states are doing and including in their curriculum. So let us learn more from Dr. Jennifer Gonzalez. Welcome, Dr. Jennifer. Thank you so much. Hello, good evening and happy holidays to everyone. Thank you for your time uh, to, you know, uh, to interview me in your awesome blogs or podcasts. <laughs> Thank yes. you, Dr. Jenny. You are welcome. Congratulations in your journey, Dr. Jennifer Gaza. Now you are a physical therapist in a famous hospital here in Delaware. And Nanti Coke before, now it's Tidal Health. And then you are an acute physical therapist. But now you are transitioning also and part-time now in your um, financial company. And also, I remember you have your own company, physical therapy outpatient, but you sold your share and you just pursued the financial industry. So tell us more um, about a little bit of your physical therapy, entrepreneur life and experience and how you transition in financial company. Wow, that's a that's a lot of uh, information to tell, but uh, with the limited time, I will try to uh, concise it. Uh, <laughs> so um actually i'm going to prepare or i'm going to share something mm -hmm. to you so that um since you want to know more about my journey as a physical therapist as a human being and as an entrepreneur so just like what you said dr jenny uh i've been a physical therapist for 21 years so that is all together combined um like in the philippines and um here in the United States. So just like what you said, my journey in the Philippines as a physical therapist, as an educator, actually, uh, I was uh, like a, a professional trainer, instructor to nursing schools in the in the Philippines. And I was like, an, I enrolled in extension, extension, Extend, huh? internship externship yeah, extend. program mm -hmm. in uh, St. Luke's and then I became mm -hmm. a full-time physical therapist in the medical city uh, for more than two years um, mm -hmm. so I also had like a home uh, physical therapy patient in the Philippines um, only two because you know uh, we're both here working in the United States so the system, the healthcare system in the Philippines, 
are totally different um, uh, compared to working as a physical therapist in the United States. But combine all these experiences as like a professional trainer, instructor, physical therapist in the Philippines and here in the United States, um, all of that helped me to, to my journey, actually. So um, again, so I would just like to you to meet my husband. So this uh this uh pictures are like taken when we were like 21, 22, 23 years old back in the Philippines. <laughs> so um, you know, when you graduate uh, as a physical therapist in the Philippines back in 2000, so there were like 1500 um license and then some of them they they don't have like uh you know jobs and everything so that was one uh like b me before and then um i became a professional instructor and then i had like home physical therapy patients and then uh, i went to externship to uh, acute care and then i went to outpatient phys physical therapy so again like what you said i've been here in the united states for 11 years so i um i was recruited and that's what where we met right mm -hmm. so yes we have like um uh, uh we went to a same recruiting agency a more prestigious recruiting agency who recruit nurses and physical therapists not only from the philippines but also in different world or different countries right mm -hmm. so uh, avant so that's yes. where we, so we yeah we so uh I was assigned in Delaware as a physical therapist and you were assigned in Delaware too yes. so and fortunately Dr. Jenny like when we came in here like you and me the same um uh, condition and scenario we were able to bring our our husband and our kids I have three boys so we came mm -hmm. here as an immigrant already so that was so very like blessed and fortunate um again here so i've been here in the united states for 11 years and you know here uh my experience here in the united states so i really want to because again it's a totally different system compared from philippines and united states as a physical therapy so what i did is i tried everything to develop my skills and my knowledge i expose myself i as soon as the event the recruiting agency allowed me to have a side hustle um aside from having a full-time job to their contracting facility mm -hmm. i so when they allowed me i applied or oh, to a different company like home health and we were there this in the same company too right oh home. yes yes i remember that mm -hmm. and then um that was like nine years ago 11 years ago so um my suggestion to other physical therapists who are working here are new so make sure if you want to do like a side hustle you want to make sure that your company will allow you first because you don't want to mm -hmm. do like side hustle without being approved by your contracting agency so and then I did a home health I did um so my first job was nursing home and then um now my full-time job is a hospital so in fact you know last year I was awarded so I've been in the hospital for eight years mm -hmm. so um specialty in orthopedic Okay, like hip replacement, knee replacement, shoulder replacement. Um, I'm working with six orthopedic doctors and not only orthopedic mm -hmm. patient, but, you know, general condition. Mm -hmm. So last year, uh, I was awarded as employee of the quarter for Tidal Health. Um, they have three hospitals, more than 5,000 employees. And I'm so grateful. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and aside from that, Dr. Jenny is... Um, so aside from like working in an orthopedic floor and working with different doctors, orthopedic surgeons, I was able to, you know, my mindset is not just like develop my skill as a physical therapist, but also to become an entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. So I always yes. have that uh, mindset that um, the nine to five job is not enough for us to feed our family to achieve our dreams and goals why we came here in the United States. So that's why in 2016, um, with all my knowledge, skills, and experience in outpatient, um, I have two other uh, partners that uh, we uh, open an outpatient private practice. And we run that uh, for like since 2016 uh, to 
how many like five six years mm -hmm. um so and then after the like pandemic 2020 2021 and then my goal changed and my dream changed so um I'm not, you know, I love the community. I love all the patients and the partnerships. Um, like this was taken when we had like a commercial shooting for our marketing and for our mm -hmm. local television interview, mm -hmm. the top um, picture. And this one, the bottom picture was like for when we had our ribbon cutting. Mm -hmm. So these are my two other partners and other staffs and uh, patients and everything. So we had a picture taken and was published in the newspapers. So um, at the end of the day, you know, like I love what I do as a physical therapist. Mm -hmm. I love serving people. I love helping people to achieve their functional mobility through us. But at the end of the day, we have another dreams and goals that I want to achieve as a physical therapist, as a mom, as a, and as a businesswoman. Okay? Yes, yes. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes, yeah, so I just want to share my experience there. So that's why this, uh, like you mentioned a while ago, like I sold my share mm -hmm. uh, this year, March, uh, for a greater opportunity as a businesswoman. Okay, and not mm -hmm. because like I, you know, I love them and they're still existing. So they're still in um Salisbury, Maryland, um, and still serving the community. The only thing is the, my goal, my, my goal as an entrepreneur change. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um the thing is like uh what happened is you know we work hard on our job, like a full-time job, right? We uh, so but the thing is when we work hard on our job, so I'm just gonna share it to you. It's because um, you know, that's for our living. When you work hard on your job, you you make a living to pay your bills, to pay your mm -hmm. dues, your monthly dues, your responsibilities. But what other people don't know, you have to work hard on yourself too like your side hustles the skills that you want to develop aside from your profession being a physical mm -hmm. therapist because when you work hard on yourself outside your job responsibility that's the time that you make a fortune so like extra time a uh, few hours extra time that you use to develop your other skills so that you have to to have a better skills, not not better, but this a uh, uh, professional backup plan when you cannot work as a physical therapist anymore. Mm -hmm. Because our job is more of physical. That's why we're physical therapists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there will come a time that our, our physical body will no longer endure. You know, mm -hmm. the... That's true. Mm -hmm. The the type of job that we are so at, while we're young while we can and still be able to develop another skills that's what i did to myself okay mm -hmm. so i became like a financial educator and being a financial educator you know uh, i experienced different type of lifestyle compared to um in a healthcare profession so it's more of like a financial corporate world. So totally mm -hmm. different. Again, when we work, I've been working in a healthcare system for 21 years. So healthcare industry business is totally different to a financial industry business. Which, you know, financial industry business or educations or skills are also equally important. Because financial is the one who's like controlling the whole business system, not only yes. in the United States and the Philippines, but in the entire world. Mm -hmm. And we have to know what's in there by getting into that uh, world, right? So right. people are paying hard. We work hard to achieve our dreams. So again... Um, there are like I just want to share there are two most important days of our life. The first day is when we were born, but the second day, the mo the second most important day is when you realize when you know why you were born, what is your real purpose in life. 
Mm -hmm. right? So like me, physical therapy, you want to help patient, you want to help functional mobility, attain the functional mobility of the patient. But the other skills that I've developed is help clients, peoples from all walks of life to have a financial freedom. We all work yes. hard every day, sing every single day to achieve our goals, but we have to be have to we have to have a right mindset mm -hmm. and be educated. Okay, how to take care of our money, our future. Okay. Yeah. So yes. that will determine. And again, success for every individual is different. My success is not your definition of success. Your definition of success might not my definition of success. So it's very individualized. Like when yeah. we yeah, when we set up a goal for our patient, it's always individualized goal. Never a same patient, they have a the same unique goals or unique features or unique diagnosis. They always have this the different uh different achievements of physical, different impairments, different they might have the same diagnosis, but different mm -hmm. presentation. So yes. same thing in our success as a physical therapy, as a professional uh, educator, or as an individual, wh whatever our profession is, it's very individualized. Okay? Yes. So any questions mm -hmm. so far, Dr. Jenny? <laughs> yeah, have... that's really good. I just keep uh, keep on going. Really interesting. Yes. And very important, all the points that you're sharing with us. Thank you. Okay. And then, so since you invited me to your... um. Uh, podcast, YouTube, or all your followers here in your yes. blog. I want to share some important details of about the finances. So this is mm -hmm. for free, right? Free education and free information for all of them that I just want to share a little bit, okay? So yeah, it's very the, important. The, yeah, that's very important. So the thing with the ha like um having the right mindset. So even though we're all workers, Hardworking individual, what whatever is our profession is, physical therapist, healthcare, cashier, whatever, doctor, lawyer. So we're hard worker. But the thing is, um, when it comes to finances, it doesn't matter how much is your income. It doesn't matter. What matters is how much do you save and what is the right mindset of having money or savings or income, or cash flow, whatever you call it, right? So if I'm going to ask you, Dr. Jenny, mm -hmm. you see this homeless beggar on the street? Mm -hmm. So if we're going to give them, or this individual, $1 million, let's say give her $1 million, this homeless individual, and then revisit her again after one year you gave the $1 million. What do you think will happen to the money? One million. Maybe gone. Because you spend it already, you know. Exactly. So the right answer. So um imagine so if the if this individual homeless give her money one million, what happened is all this money will be wasted if there's no proper education no proper mindset of how to handle the money, right? What if I ask you, Dr. Jenny, again, Bill Gates, are you familiar with <laughs> Mr. Bill yes. Gates? Yes, yes. Take away all his money, okay? All his assets, mm -hmm. zero, empty pocket, mm -hmm. no money at all, and let's revisit him after one year. What do you think will happen to him after one year of having no money at all? Having no money at all. Uh -huh. But still, I think he still have money because his money before has been invested and, and then it already grows. Yes. So meaning... He has the right mindset and he will mm -hmm. make sure that after like he doesn't want to stay no money at all, even for just one day. He will find a way to make money. 
Mm-hmm. Because it has the right mindset. Mindset. Investment. Right? Mm-hmm. Reinvest. Same thing with financial education. Okay. It doesn't matter how much money do you have. It doesn't matter how much income do you have. What matters is how how do you handle, what is your right mindset to handle your money? How much okay. do you save mm-hmm. for yourself, for your family, for your future? Okay, so that's why I'm, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm going to share to you this important um, structures structure here. Be- very, very basic. And I think every individual, no matter what the profession is, should know how to handle their money okay mm-hmm. so how do how do do they need to prioritize okay so in order for them to achieve their financial independence meaning financial freedom okay mm-hmm. so the when you um when you establish a financial house or financial freedom um financial independence it's like establishing a house building a house so when you build a house imagine when you bought a lot right empty lot and you're gonna build your dream home Mm -hmm. so when you're building your home usually where do you want to start building your home you're gonna build your home from the ceiling or from the floor from the floor from the bottom yeah from the ground from the ground so it's like the same thing when you're building your financial house you have to start excuse me from the bottom because that is your foundation Mm -hmm. okay so the financial foundation start from increasing your cash flow okay because how Mm -hmm. can you establish a financial house if you don't have a stream of cash flow coming into your pocket so there are two types of cash flow, active cash flow and your passive cash flow. So active income is where you, um, in return, like when you do your service and in return, they will pay you, right? Like your time, yes. so like mm-hmm. having a job. Passive cash flow is even if you're sleeping, you're generating money. Even if you're on vacation, you're generating money. And we want to establish an ash, uh, active cash flow. And at the same time on the side, again, what you do on the side hustle that will help you create your passive income, right? Mm-hmm. So have a, a cash flow or a stream of income. Again, they, they tell us one stream of income is not enough anymore, especially if you're living in the United States. <laughs> But even if I think even if you're in the Philippines in different countries because of the inflation rate, right? Because of the inflation rate, um, so one income is not enough anymore. Okay. And then once you establish your income, your cash flow, okay, you have like a regular cash flow, whether it's active and passive or just one, as long as you have a regular, then you start protecting yourself. You have to protect yourself, your life, your health, your assets, your family members. You have to make sure that everybody lives under your house, within your household, are properly protected. When we say properly protected, it's not you're inside the home. Like proper protection means something happened to you, your family, you know, they will not be, they will not leave homeless they will still be able to live the life that you want them to live if you get sick and cannot go to work anymore at least you are protected not only you you and your husband or if you're husband and wife or if you're soul or single mom or single dad uh, you want to make sure that every individual or loved ones or family member who's dependent on your income dependent on you or you're supporting they are properly protected as well so we protect our life through life insurance we protect our health through long-term care chronic illness we protect our assets not only we protect our income our retirement our savings 
and not only us, but again, the whole family. Because something happened to us, who will sacrifice to take care of us? Something happened to our family member, who will stop working? Okay, when you stop working, then you go back to your foundation is not strong again. Okay? So again, once you establish your cash flow, make sure that proper protection you have for yourself and for your family. And then once everybody's protected, you want to make sure that you intend, intended, you, like intensely eliminate the death. So zero debt, whether it's a credit card, personal loan, car loan, even the mortgage. Okay, pay them soon. Okay, because like the house, this is the mold of the house that's killing your house. Right? So we have to eliminate debt. And then once we eliminate debt, we have we have to save emergency fund. Okay, or we can do like both at the same time, saving money to uh, pay off our debt and at the same time, saving money for emergency fund. Okay, so emergency fund, this is like a, a liquid money, a money that's available within, you know, 24 hours that we can withdraw uh, available for something like there's an unexpected expenses that will rise up. So usually emergency fund is three to six months of our income. Save in the bank, available for us when we need it. But because of the pandemic, 2020, 2021, what happened? They said there's a lot of uh, employees that got furloughed, lose their job. And it took about more than a, a year before they recover from the loss of the job. So they said emergency fund now is not only like three to six months, not enough, but one year of our income. And now once we establish our cash flow, proper protection, uh, we eliminate our debt and we have saved emergency funds, that's the time that we can grow our money. Then we, we can invest our money because our money, our financial foundation is now solid. But other people, you know, without proper education, financial literacy, they usually build their financial house in an inverted form. So they usually like start with or do the investment first without having proper protection, without having a solid regular cash flow. So if you build that way, your financial house will collapse. So this is what I want to share to your supporters and, um, you know, <laughs> so at least they we can give them information that will help them, right? Yes, and yes. Mm -hmm. So again, if they, they want to know more about uh, pre-financial education, um, they can contact me or contact you. They can contact me through you. Um, I gave my personal uh, phone number there. <laughs> so I hope that a simple uh, illustration and simple education will help them. Um, working as a physical therapist or if they want to like establish a side hustle, they can contact me or contact you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Jenny for Gonzalez. This is really amazing. Um, these are very important for everybody because not everybody, I like your point when you say that it's not important how much is your salary, but what you save. The problem is that we, we as a physical therapist, we have lots of salary. We have high salary because we're doing even PRN in different setting. And we have really wonderful opportunity all over. But the question is, we really don't have savings, you know, um, we because we really don't know how to save and nobody really informed us properly from curriculum, education. So this is really a good point that um, everybody who has family or not need to know so they can protect their family and themselves. And I like the investment part. I love the 
active and a passive income. I remember we have the Robert, uh, Robert Kiyosaki. We need to know where we need to place. We, we are now self-employed, then business. We need to be on the other side, like being investment, not always be employed, right? So thank you so much. These are really important points. We learned a lot and we will connect with you. Thanks for giving us your, and this is really your phone number, huh? Yes. <laughs> thank you. We appreciate you. I thought you will just put your email. All right. <laughs> and we can connect with your Facebook and then thank you. So guys, if you have yes. any questions, those are really wonderful. And another point I just want to highlight. When you have a business on your own, you will have a tax um, advantage. You mm -hmm. Because nowadays when you have a small business, that's really a great tax advantage in the long run. So you really need to invest in your future by knowing how to be an entrepreneur. And we'll help you. Dr. Jennifer Gonzalez will connect with you as well. So you only you now have a health and wealth, right? So thank yes. you so much, guys. If you have any questions, connect with us. I'm Dr. Jenny, physical therapist and doctor of physical therapy. Dr. Jennifer Gonzalez also introduced this knowledge to me. So we are both financial educator. We're helping lots of families and also learning more and more. So thank you for that opportunity, Dr. Jennifer Gonzalez, too. All right. And we're able to travel. When you see us, those pictures that were all over in Cancun, and we're all over in Mexico. That's because of the wonderful companies able to um, help us and uh, travel for with us, you know. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Have a happy holidays. Happy and holidays, everyone. Yes. Especially in Philippines, guys. Maligayang Pasko. Happy holidays. If you watch this after holidays, so still um, we will always keep reading you be safe and be careful <laughs> and this is my cat if this is a really time all right say happy holidays everyone thank you guys Shout out to team bc <laughs> yes happy holidays team bc happy holidays to our all uh wonderful year for us for the fishy gen supporters and balance and falls thank you guys have a good night all right. Bye. Thank you, Dr. Jennifer Gonzalez. We appreciate